Hello, my name is Brad Kramer with Provenio Consulting. And today I was gonna to take a few minutes and talk about some different resources if you have a need for um, emergency response planning for chemical hazards, or if you're otherwise looking for resources to um, look up those hazards and what you should have for your emergency response team if you have one. Um, so the ones I'm gonna talk about here today, I'm gonna to share my screen quick here. I'm talking about um, safety data sheets, NIOSH Pocket Guide for Chemical Hazards, Emergency Response Guidebook, and the WISER app. Um, so I'll talk about where each of those is beneficial, what kind of information is, is in them, and some other uh, um, topics there. So the first one I want to talk about is the safety data sheet, SDS. All right, this is the one that OSHA requires that if you're a business that has um, chemicals and stuff like that on hand, um, you need to have a safety data sheet for every chemical that you have. Um, this does not apply. There are some exemptions, so it doesn't apply if, for example, you're in office space. And let's say we have uh, Windex, what you'd normally have at home, and it's just used for um, um, cleaning the office, for example, wiping down windows, wiping down mirrors, right? You wouldn't re be required to have a a safety data sheet in that case. Um, now, if, for example, we were a warehouse and we shipped out pallets and pallets of Windex, and of course you'd be required to have the safety data sheet on hand. So there are a few different exemptions, but anyway, the SDS is probably the most common um, way that we convey information on different chemicals. They're very comprehensive, so they have a lot of good information in them. Um, they are going to be limited because they are a um, static document. They don't have um, interactive maps or anything with them. They're just uh, a document, you know, uh, you know, usually about uh, 10, 15 pages in that range, um, sometimes shorter, of course. Um, so these are good for emergency response planning. So if you know what you have on site for chemicals and stuff like that, you can assess them all, um, break them up into categories. Uh, making sure that you train your employees on what uh, PPE to use and stuff like that. And um, basically making sure you're following the guidelines that they have in there. Um, now, if we're talking more about emergency response planning, the classic uh, um, go-to guide was the emergency response guidebook. It is, is seems like when I teach Haswopper, that's what a lot of companies have trained on. Um, but this book, is, it's very limited in what it has in it. And I'm sorry, the, uh, um, the background isn't showing up real good on here because of the, the green screen behind me. So it, sorry, it kind of disappears on you. Um, but anyway, it's very limited. What's in the emergency response guidebook? Um, but this seems to be what a lot of companies want to go for, but it, it doesn't really meet their needs. And here, I'll show you why quick. Um, if we're looking through the guidebook, there is definitely some good resources in there for um, for example, if I want to look at the uh, different DOT placards and stuff like that, all the different classifications are there. Um, but let's say, let's use ammonia and hydrous ammonia as an example, because that's what a lot of businesses have. Um, so if I'm going through the guidebook, and, and I'm just going to use the one on the computer here to make it easier to show. Um, so let's say I know the number, a DOT number, which is going to be on the side of a semi, for example, if a semi or a train uh, were to derail or flip, um, the DOT number is what I would see outside. So that would be on page 31, and I see that uh, 1,005, so that's uh, anhydrous ammonia, that tells me what's in that, that rail car. So if I have that DOT number, I'm going to the yellow section, otherwise if I don't have the DOT number, I just know the chemical name. Uh, then I would go to the blue section and look that up. So I'm going to run up to page 100 here. I know what uh, page that's in to make it quicker here. So again, we see ammonia, anhydrous ammonia here, and it's also um, listed as ammonia anhydrous. So if I go up one page here, so it would be either way. And it's going to tell me what page I go to. So one page 125, or excuse me, not page 125, but uh, um, section 125 in the orange section. Um, so I'm going to just jump ahead to page 188 here. So here's uh, 125. And this is not specific to anhydrous ammonia. This was going to be a different, a class of chemicals that have very similar emergency response properties. Um, so it's going to give me that just real quick overview on um, 
how back I need to evacuate, um, whether or not I can use water, stuff like that. Just a, a real quick overview. It's not gonna get into specifics of that chemical. For example, we see right here, um, isolate spill or leak for at least 1000 meters. And then it says here, if I have a tank rail car or tank truck involved in a fire, one mile is what I should uh, evacuate, right? So just real quick information. It doesn't get into a lot of specifics and details. Uh, then I would go over to the green section, which is going to give me more information on how far back to evacuate. So I'm going to go to page 300 here, and I already have that set up here on, uh, so I view it the other way. All right, so in landscape view here to make it simple. So if we look at uh, 1005 anhydrous ammonia, it's going to again tell me 30 meters or 100 feet to evacuate. But if I have a large spill, I need to refer to table three. All right, so this gives me uh, real quick information with a little more specifics on how far I need to evacuate. So let's go to table three, which is going to be um, page 353. And table three has the, the major, uh, the three most common um, chemicals um, that are um, um, airborne. Um, so we look right here. So the, the TIH, um, inhalation hazards. So these are the big six, right? And hydrous ammonia is one of them. So it's gonna have more information on different size bills, rail car, tanker truck, um, stuff like that. And it's, so it's gonna give me better information on how far back to evacuate, right? So you can definitely see that this has its limitations. Now look at, let's look at the NIOSH pocket guide. NIOSH pocket guide, um, it's another, it's a book. Um, you can also get it online as an app or as a go to the website. Um, and what that does is that has a half a page for every chemical that's in here. There's roughly about 700 chemicals in this book. And so again, we can see ammonia and it's gonna have a lot of good information there. Um, pretty much the chemical properties, what's the boiling point, what's the flash point, um, what are the, uh, at what point is it toxic, so the permissible exposure limits and stuff like that, what PPE to wear. But again, it's only a half a page, so it's not going to be very uh, comprehensive. All right, still some good information. But uh, my favorite one is the Wiser app. Here it is on the desktop on my computer. Um, that's going to be a little bit different than it looks on your phone if you upload it or if you download it. Um, so it's very easy to use on my phone there. Let's see if I can get a view. Um, and I can quickly put information in. And where this is beneficial is it's interactive. Um, so I can get a lot of different scenarios in here on my phone. And usually phone, the GPS is gonna be extremely accurate. Um, if I look on here on the desktop version, it's using my IP address for my computer. Um, so I actually kind of drug the pin over, but when I say use current location, it's just a few minutes ago, it was showing me out in the middle of the lake, right? So that might not be completely accurate if I'm on a desktop. Um, however, if I'm on my phone using my GPS, it gets me right down to exactly where the GPS shows I am within a few feet. So what I can do is uh, look up any chemical. In this case, I chose ammonia again. I can look up information, um, protective equipment. It'll tell me what I should be wearing for PPE. Um, I can look up protective distances. So like what I just showed you. And here I said, use current location, use worst case scenario. Um, so switched it to ammonia there. Um, and then uh, I can put wind direction, size of the spill, large or small, um, container type, um, all that kind of stuff, time of day, wind speed. And it's gonna give me a map that's specific to me. So now I could uh, know exactly where I need to have that evacuation area. Um, I can do a screenshot and send this to other emergency responders so they can see exactly um, where that isolation area should be and stuff like that. So I really like Wiser. Um, like I said, it's an app, so you can take it with you. Um, the other thing you can do with it is I can see how it's going to interact with other chemicals. Um, so it has, of course, all that information, but I can uh, maybe a little bit easier to show on, on my phone here. So here on my phone, all I'd have to do is do is uh, click a button and how's it gonna react? I'd click add chemical and let's say I chose chlorine 
and it's going to tell me exactly what the hazards are, gases going to produce and stuff like that. So it's nice and interactive so I can really get some um, good information on it. Um, whereas an SDS, of course, this can't, can't tell you how it's going to interact with every, a lot of different chemicals because only a, it's a static document. So hopefully that helps you uh, make a decision on what you should have for your emergency response team. If I was putting together an emergency response team, um, I definitely want to have the safety data sheet in the, you know, in some uh, central location being easy to get to during an emergency. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have the emergency response guidebook or even use the app um, unless I was like an emergency responder like a fire department or a police officer that might show up to any number of chemicals. Um, but Wiser is really where I'm going to get go to for that information because Wiser pulls the information from the uh, um, NIOSH pocket guide, emergency response guidebook, as well as some different in additional information, right? So some great resources for you. Um, they all have their place, they all have their benefits, um, but like I said, Wiser is my favorite one. So hopefully that uh, helps you make a decision on uh, knowing what resources are out there, where you can find additional information and stuff like that. Um, give it a try and, and uh, get familiar with all the different types of uh, information and media out there so that you can, when uh, you have to do that planning or if something goes wrong, you know where to find it quicker and how to use it. Have a great day and stay safe, everyone.